Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dawn McCaw. We are here for another episode of Arts Chat. Thank you so much for joining. And today we have a very special guest, Sarah Heitmeyer. I will bring her on in just a second. And let's see. Again, I'm Dawn McCaw. I'm the senior specialist for the Fine and Performing Arts students. And this is another, our last one of the semester, our Arts Chat, our Friday Arts Chat. And today we are welcoming our guest, Sarah Heitmeyer. Good afternoon, Sarah. <clears throat> Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. And Sarah is uh, the owner at Sarah Heitmeyer Ceramics. And she was a 20, is a 2016 alumna MFA in ceramics. And then she earned her BFA at Alfred University in ceramics as well. So that's just a brief intro. And Sarah, I'll let you say a little bit more about yourself. Um, so we know your, your you know, major and your MFA concentration. And so do you wanna just start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and about your company? Uh, sure. So um, I'm currently living in Fishkill, not too far away from New Paltz. Um, I'm working out of my studio that I have at home. Um, <clears throat> right now I'm um, building a portfolio to show in galleries and prepare to reach out to interior designers and some different um, art databases and such. Um, <clears throat> behind me is an example of one of my pieces. Um, and I also do, I teach actually um, an online uh, computer-aided design course for New Paltz. And um, I've always kind of shuffled um, my studio practice with um, several part-time jobs and that's always changed over the years. So um, I had a period of time between undergrad and grad school. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting over the cold. Um, so I graduated undergrad at Alfred, as you mentioned, in 2010. And I took that time, I knew I wanted a few years afterwards to just explore different um, types of studios, different types of uh, opportunities. And <clears throat> so I moved around a lot. I did a few uh, internships, a few residencies, um, and it just, and I worked for different artists. So it really helped me see how different environments worked, how different um, business structures worked. Um, and I think that was one of the most valuable lessons I think is just kind of changing what I was um, experiencing in the community that I was in. Um, and then of course, coming to New Paltz, as you mentioned, uh, I, I think by that time I knew I had wanted to have a design and production studio. Um, Cause I was recently working with, an artist that was doing that. They were making um, custom pieces for hospitality, private um, homes, and um, it just seemed really exciting and how she was always working on something new and researching, but applying her expertise to those things. Um, and I had worked for some uh, production companies and, uh, say like a potter, for example, and it's just, you know, a different type of work that, um, I don't know, I just tried a lot of different things, I guess, leading up to uh, where I am now. That's great. Can you speak a little bit about a residency that you attended or um, were part of? Because I, I don't know if, you know, students might want to hear a little bit more about what that's like. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I did a few internships and residencies and basically a residency is different from an internship in that it's based more on giving you just time to work. So often there might be a little bit of time that you're giving to the institution that you're hosted at, but generally you're there to um, 
build a body of work to explore, to research, to re uh, research and use the um, opportunities that are there. So I did a year long residency in Rochester at the Flower City Pottery. Um, and that was a art center that included a ceramic studio, a photography studio and a, a printmaking studio. And I did a little bit of teaching for them. Um, like I mentioned, helped around the studio. And I did that right before um, coming to New Paltz. So I knew I would have that year long time to um, continue my research, build a portfolio that I could then apply to grad school with. And um, that happened like right kind of in the middle of my residency. It was perfect timing. And so then I had time after that to have a show and which felt a bit more, you know, celebratory um, before I went back to school after that. Um, yeah. Thank you. So you have your own business. What skills would you say are really important that maybe you didn't even realize you, you would be utilizing so much or, you know, just talk about that experience of being an entrepreneur. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think of a skill that I didn't realize I would be using. I mean, or even skills that you use. Okay. Uh, I mean, Definitely just like networking, public speaking, um, organizational skills are just so huge. I mean, I think the thing that everybody talks about as a small business owner is um, how much you have to do as one person or as a small business and um, how little time you have for all those things. So the more organized you are, of course, you know, the more time you have um, and so I guess experiencing that to the degree that's necessary is definitely something that I'm continually learning, of course. Um, and um, it's been interesting seeing how I, I use a lot of different processes in my work and it's been interesting, interested, interesting in seeing how um, that draws people to my work and has also provided me different opportunities. So I'm using a lot of digital processes as well as ceramic processes. And um, that's definitely, I don't know, <clears throat> it helped expand my audience and um, also kept me excited at just being inspired by um, like a broader breadth of people and projects and environments that people are working with. And um seeing how I could connect my ceramic work or um, push my ceramic work in a different way than if I'm just focused on studio and um, other artists, for example. Um, but yeah, as a business, you know, of course I'm using social media. Um, newsletters are really important. Just um, getting your following and communicating directly with them. Um, I do work with, um, coaches sometimes. I find it really valuable to have that, um, specific session to help, you know, an expertise guide you mm -hmm. and give feedback on something. So it's usually an investment that is hard to, uh, pay for in the moment or leading up to, but, um, if you find the right person, you know, it's just really so valuable to get someone else's expertise. And I know a lot of artists just try to do everything, especially ceramic artists. They're their own like kiln. They have to do their own kiln maintenance and their glaze stuff and their clay stuff and take care of their studio and take care of their website. And there's just so many things. And, um, you know, I found it comes to a point where I just really want to bring in that person that, is really specialized in doing in that thing. And that frees up my time to do what I'm good at. Um, and usually pushes me a little more than I would have done just on my own. So, yeah. Yeah, just, I'm just <laughs> imagining, and then there's like the sales end. Though so that business aspect of it, and yeah, it's a lot. But yeah. thank, you, thank you for sharing all that. Um, 
Let's see. Well, you mentioned finding a coach. Is that something that the coach is specialized within the work, the art, or is it more the business end or is it combined? I've done both actually. Mm -hmm. um, I was, uh, I found it really valuable with somebody that hadn't worked with artists before, but they were really experienced in, um, I don't know, just kind of helping you think through, helping you like prioritize and strategize. I think the strategy thing is really key, especially when you are that um, singular person trying to juggle all of these different things, um, that outside voice helping you just pull out and, and look at the details a little differently is really helpful. Um, but then, yeah, I think after doing that for a little bit, I did realize that um, working with uh, someone in the arts was super valuable because they can help you with how to write a grant, um, maybe what gallery is better or what region, depending on what um, opportunities or what kind of audience you're trying to reach. Um, they can help you in just, you know, the connections that they might have. That's been super valuable. Um, being familiar with the processes that you're working with is always helpful because they know where you're coming from, but I don't know. I think it's still really important in how that person is helping you strategize is the biggest thing for me. Now you also, you're an adjunct and you teach a, a class for SUNY New Paltz, right? Yeah. Um, do you ever have any like epiphanies or things you really want to share with students that like, if you could speak to your younger self, cause you're, you know, you were there and not super long ago. Yeah. Um, like advice I would give myself as a student. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, or at least with my students and cause I'm, so I'm teaching an online asynchronous course. So it's, um, I don't have that much of a connection as someone in person does, uh, which I miss sometimes. Um, but I find, I feel like that, um, you can always, com I think, communicate and connect with your professor more than you think you can as a student. I think I, um, I just really appreciate the students that are always like checking in and connecting with me, asking questions, filling me in on things. And it's never a burden. It's always a good thing in my mind. Um, and then also like staying in touch with that person if you value the experience that you had with them or the work that they're doing or, or something like that. Um, I think, especially in undergrad, I was really shy in interacting with my professors outside of school and following up with them afterwards. And um, whenever I would run into them, they would just be so happy to see me. And I was like, Oh, you know, I should really like reach out to them. And when I had, they were always really generous. Um, so now being in that position, um, yeah, I'm just always think that students can take advantage of the people that are there to guide them, not only give them assignments and grades, but they have so much um, that they can share. And I think it's exciting when professors have the opportunity to do that um, outside of coursework too. Great, thank you. So I'm, you know, looking at your work behind you, and it just makes me think how I'd want that in my living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I did look at your website, and it, you know, it's, it's just so different. I, I really, I love it with all the different textures, and um, I mean, I, and I wouldn't be able to afford this, but if I could do my bathroom all in that, because it's artwork as well. As <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just beautiful. What other, are there other types of work that are very different from that that you want to speak about that you do? Um, I do some functional wear, um, mostly because I, I, I think the, the vision I have for my work is best represented by larger scale pieces like mm -hmm. this. But just like you said, I want to be able to offer things that say like I could buy myself or someone could buy as a gift. Um, and 
especially being in ceramics, you know, there's a, um, so many potters, so many of my friends like are making mugs and pots and it's just so much fun to collect them and share those things. So I try to offer things on different scales. I have some, but I don't do too much because really this is my thing. Um, so I'm always trying to find a way that I can translate this into like a cup. So I have little water cups or little um, other cups with like flower designs on the bottom or even just offering these pieces at a smaller scale. So it's more accessible to different people. Yeah. And that's, that's part of, I guess, owning a business is trying to branch out and have, like you said, different pieces that would be attractive to different audiences. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a balance in figuring out which one, um, you know, like crunching numbers and seeing what gives you, um, what gives you what you're looking for and reaching your target audience. But I think having those, so things like this are definitely more suited for what I'm interested in pursuing, but yeah, offering those smaller things are just important to me to be able to um, share that with more people. So you really shared so much and, and thank you so much for, for everything that you've shared. I'm wondering, are you on the orange and blue network? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no. Okay. So it is something through our alumni affairs office and it's a way for students to have career conversations and be able to contact you. And I'm wondering, I'll send you the link after if you're interested in joining that, but it's a great way if, if students have questions, either following up from this or that they would be able to, you know, then contact you through the system. But it's a great way to reach you. So I'll send that to you if you're interested. Yeah, um, that would be great. Thank you. Also, you can network with anybody else on it. So it's for you as well. So okay. alumni can network with anybody on the system as well. So I'm always trying to build that. Nice. So thank you. And any last minute things that you'd like to say as our celebrity guest today? <laughs> um, I guess... I guess for students, um, I think you probably hear it a lot, but I think something that really pushed my work to a different level was working with different departments and reaching out to different people. Um, so I just encourage students to not be afraid to reach out to someone that you've never had a conversation with. Um, but when you're a student, somebody hearing that they're really welcoming and especially being a part of the new pulse community and you always can afterwards but sometimes when you're not a student somebody's like who are you like what do you want and but when you're a student someone's like oh they're learning they're excited they're interested let me show them what uh is going on so i don't know just don't be afraid to reach out to other people and see what's going on somewhere else because you're probably gonna like i'm continuing to research like ceramic things and business things, but those small exposures that I had to stuff outside of that is always what is going to give you a little, something a little different in your work um, that I think is really valuable. And that's what the campus community is all about. Yeah. That, and that's great advice. And I mean, like sometimes I think students will hear the word networking and it sounds a little scary, but like you're now part of my network and I'm a part of yours. So I think what I've noticed is those meaningful connections can be really organic and then, you know, meaningful so that if I heard of somebody that was interested in your work, I would refer them to you and it's, it's a give and take. Um, yeah. That, and networking is talking with your professors. And like you said, New Paltz has a great community. Um, and, and even, you know, when I was a student years ago at, at another university, though, maybe holding back and not reaching out. And, and like you said, at New Paltz, your professors want to help you. Like they are excited to talk to you and, and share whatever resources they can. Yeah, I think um, networking, yeah, is definitely a scary word for me, but it's, it's, I wouldn't 
think of it that way. I just think of it as being like, I'm asking, like I asked a art history professor to come into my studio and you could tell she had like never been asked that before. And she was just like, what? And she was just like so excited to see what I was working on outside of class. And she brought in like this whole other perspective to things. Mm -hmm. So it's just something like that, like that's networking, you know, sending an email to somebody is, it's just, just break it down into those smaller things that are less scary. And mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you for giving your time today to speak with us and have a great weekend. And this is our last arts chat for the semester, but I will see everybody next year. Thanks so much, Sarah. Bye. Thank have you.